Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Shai, Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Shai, Brakatia Hawa, Brakatia Hawa, Bashim Yahu Shai, Bashim, Hakutash, the blondes of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone with true wealth. Citations to the whole for the elect out there. You Akim to Zadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the pre Shaman. We got some hot off the presses, brother. Breaking news. Uh, this one is NATO invites Finland, Sweden to join. Um, says Russia is a direct threat now. If you brothers follow the channel, I did a, a lesson saying how Turkey pretty much shot down Finland and Sweden um, proposition to join NATO uh, on the claims of terrorism because um, Sweden is the safe havens for the Kurds and the Kurds are going against Turkey. Okay, and Turkey is a part of NATO. Now, Erdogan has lifted this. And Finland and Sweden is set to join, says Russia is a direct threat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this. It says uh, Madrid, June 29th. This is Reuters. NATO, NATO invited Sweden and Finland on Wednesday to join the military alliance in one of the biggest shifts in European security in decades. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine pushed um, Helensky and Stockholm to drop their traditional of neutrality. Now I'm going to say something about this. They they provoke they provoked Russia to invade Ukraine because they were shelling the Donbass. I mean, putting um, they was forcing um, Vladimir Putin's hand to get involved because Joe Biden, okay, um, his son Hunter Biden has already been out there that they had um, dealings whatever with Sweden, all right, because they profit from these wars. You know, these, these billions that are getting funded over there and the guys that is trying to help Sweden is complete bullshit. You know, because most of the military um, aid that goes to Sweden is given to the rear guard and not the vanguard. All right. Or not the front lines. So a lot of people over there are dying. However, the oligarchs are profiting. And you have the um, MIC, the military industrial complex, that's also profiting off these wars. Now, mind you, President Trump. He didn't start any news wars, all right? But remember him saying that they think that Ukraine, he said that Ukraine and Russia should talk things out. He did not want to get involved with a war with Russia. And that's why they had to get that guy out of there because every single major war has been under the Democratic um, Party. Now, I'm not saying I'm leaning right or Republican per se, okay? I'm just state, stating the fact, all right, that the Democratic Party, because guess what? At the end of the day, Right wing, left wing is still the same bird, right? It's just part of the same beast, okay? But the Democratic side has always tend to deal with war, see? It wasn't until George Bush came on the scene that the Republicans went to war, and that's why they called it a neocon, which is sort of a neoconservative. Neo neo meaning new, a new type of conservative, because the Republicans slash conservatives were known not to go to war. But guess what? Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord's a man of war, and the Lord is puppeteering these wars. Reading on, NATO's 30 allies took the decision at their summit in Madrid and also agreed to formally um, treat Russia as its most significant and direct threat to allied security, according to summit statement. Now, why would you, Finland, and, I've, and I said this in the last show, why would Finland and Sweden want to join NATO? Shit, man, they, they pay you a big bag. You know, now Sweden is a well-off country. You know, the GDP per capita in Sweden is over 55K and Finland is over like 45. So they make money, but the oligarchs want more money. And in trade, right, NATO, which is just an extension of the United States military, you get to host military bases there and all that. Now, when I'm going to get into the scripture, okay, I'm going to show you that Turkey is playing both sides, but ultimately will lean towards Russia. It says, today, we have decided to invite Finland and Sweden to become members of NATO. NATO leaders said in their declaration after Turkey lifted a veto on Finland and Sweden joining. Yeah, so Erdogan is playing both sides, playing. There's a lot of House of Cards type shit going on with the, with the politics. Ratification in allied parliaments is likely to take up to a year. But once it is done, Finland and Sweden will be covered by NATO's Article 5 Collective Defense Clause putting them under the United States protective nuclear umbrella. You see that? So right now, nations are allying themselves, okay? We will make sure we are all able to protect all allies, including Finland and Sweden, 
Slottenberg said. In the meantime, the Allies are set to increase their troop presence in the Nordic region, holding more military exercises and naval patrols in the Baltic Sea to, to reassure Sweden and Finland. After four hours of talks in Madrid on Tuesday, Turkish President um, um, Tayyip Erdogan, Tayyip Erdogan agreed with his fin Finnish and Swedish counterparts a series of security measures to allow the two Nordic countries to overcome the Turkish veto that uh, um, Ankara imposed in May due to its concerns about terrorism. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization was founded in 1949 to defend against the Soviet threat. Now here's the shit though, there's no more Soviet Union. And they said after the Soviet Union was dismantled, they wouldn't move one inch forward. But as we can see, that was a lie. Psalm 55, his words are smoother than butter. So we know that the so-called white man has said, doesn't uphold his word. You know, he's always breaking his agreement. Russia, Russia's February 24th invasion of Ukraine gave the organization a new impetus after failures in Afghanistan and internal discord during the era of the former U.S. President Donald Trump, which they're trying to lock Donald Trump up right now, um, if you've been following the news. We are sending a strong message to Russia's President Vladimir Putin, you will not win. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez said in a speech, Allies also agreed on NATO's first new strategic concept, its master planning document in a decade. Russia, previously classed as a tragic partner of NATO, is now identified as NATO's main threat. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a direct threat to our Western way of life. And this guy, Vladimir Putin, does not want to destroy Ukrainians because Ukrainians and Russians are the same people. You know, they, it's pretty much like Canada and the United States. You know, people in Buffalo and Canada always go back and forth. It says... Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo added, citing the wider impact of the war, such as a rise in energy and food prices, right? Because all these different sanctions and all that stuff you're doing on Russia is only affecting the common folk. Joe Biden doesn't care what the gas prices are, but guess what? The average person does, and this has a global effect. Why? 18% of the world's oil comes out of Russia, and I, and I believe they control 35% of the world's grain. So all these sanctions, which is just nothing more than ancient world sieges, all right, are having a dramatic effect globally on the regular civilians, you know, me, myself, I mean, ourselves included. The planning document also cited China as a challenge for the first time, setting the stage for the 30 allies to plan to handle Beijing's transformation from a Beijing trading part into a fast-growing competitor from the Arctic to Cyber Seas, right, because... Um, China is also beefing with the um, West because over Taiwan, for example, Taiwan on the particular article belongs to Britain for another, what, 40 years, 40 plus years. But Ta uh, China wants Taiwan now. So that's also creating tension. But, you know, these countries in the West want to use Taiwan as a base to house their nuclear defense systems, man. So they basically it's like this. I want miss every superpower in the world or missiles pointed and closer to the next superpower, you see? So if you could have Taiwan, have missiles on there, then it's closer, you know? What I'm going to do right now, is, brothers, you know, I've been talking. But real quick, I'm, before I get into the scriptures, I want to show you a map. So let's look at the map. Let's see. Let's see. Let's look at the map. Finland is over here, right? You can see Sweden. You can see Finland. There's the Baltic Sea. There's wars over this territory, right? Now... Finland, Sweden is not so much as a threat to Russia as you can see. Russia is um, Russia is a huge landmass. Where is that? I was just on Moscow. Yeah, see, they wanted Georgia. They wanted Georgia to join NATO. They want Ukraine to join NATO. They want Finland, and as you can see, Moscow is right here. You see. So pretty much, they want to surround. Russia, and pretty much also, they want to seize, look at Kiev, Kiev is right there, they want to seize these nations um, and have them join NATO before Vladimir Putin could expand and take them, you see, so the whole goal right now, so like, yeah, is to surround Russia, look at Russia, Russia is a huge ass landmass, you see that, Russia is very big. 
All right over here you have China. So these are the eastern east of the countries that they want. Boom. Look at that. Finland, Ukraine. You know, don't be surprised that they want Belarus. Okay. Just to claim Russia. You know? And the United States, we all the way over here. Hold on, so like it won't let me. United States is all the way. Damn, the map is kind of fucking up. I guess it won't let me zoom out. Oh, here it is. United States is over here. Okay. All the way on the Western Hemisphere. Okay. So they have to get all the way over to the Eastern Hemisphere. So the whole goal is to get nations that are closer to Russia. You see? And that's how come Russia has allied itself with Venezuela. Look how close Venezuela is. Venezuela is right here, very close to the United States. So that's what it's about. It's about, can I get a smaller nation to ally myself against the next superpower? Now let's go into these scriptures. This is the book of Ezekiel um, 38 and 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against it. Now, thankfully, this Bible app, the MySword app, has a map. I downloaded the map, so I should be able to pull up the map. And if you can see Gog, you see Gog and you see Tubal, this is Russia. You see it? That's Russia. And Tubal is Turkey today. I'm trying to see if I could... Because sometimes if you zoom out, it shows you the ancient, what it's called today. So Gog is Russia. And two balls is over the, it's Turkey. That's right. So it says, Prophesy against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, and two ball, and prophesy against it, and say, And thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yasha, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach, and two ball, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in, into thy jaws. Now, what does it mean, turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws? It means it's going to put the spirit on them to get back in that Soviet Union spirit. All right. It says, and I will bring thee forth and all that army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields of them handling swords. The great army that these, that Meshach and Tubal and, and Magog is going to put together is a military um, missile defense and offense system. Okay. Because war so they're not fought fought like the ancient world, really. You know? With bucklers and all that. It's 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 all about who got the, the missiles, who got the great sword, the missiles. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet. Here goes your allies now. See? Because there is a um struggle over there to gain um allyship with Middle Eastern nation because guess what? The stage really is being set right now, but the the, the matchstick is going to start over there in the Middle East. Because the scriptures tell you it's going to start in uh, the Most High's judgment. Yahweh Shapat is over there in the Middle East. Okay? Basically, Israel is going to trigger something in the Middle East. And it's going to, uh, the state of Israel is going to trigger something in the Middle East that's going to have like a, a domino effect. An entangling alliance effect and kicking World War III. Because the scripture says the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock of the nation of Edom is the so-called Jews. Verse 6. Gomer and all his bands, the house of uh, Togomar, Togoma of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be though a god unto them so russia is going to be a god unto these smaller nations because a lot of these smaller nations that we just mentioned ethiopia libya they hate america you know america went into libya got um gaddafi out and pretty much destroyed that country you know there's a lot of these small nations like assyria that's allied right now with um russia hates america hates israel iran you can put them in there see so that's the lord right there 
After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the, the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Oh, no, let me get the part where it says an evil thought. Bear with me, brothers. Evil thought. It's the book of Ezekiel. I was almost there anyways. Ezekiel 38 and 10. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Shai, It shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. Right, because President Vladimir Putin is somewhat very diplomatic. You know, even with Russia, he didn't go full force mowing people down, just destroying them, you know? And he's always trying to work something out where he doesn't want to escalate things. In fact, he even asked, can we join NATO? <laughs> you know, can Russia join NATO? Of course, NATO said no. But he's always trying to work something out politically. Like, he's like trying to be um diplomatic. But the Lord tell you that an evil thought is going to come into the minds of whoever's leading Russia at the time this prophecy take place to just say, look, to hell with all this bullshit, to hell with being nice, to hell with being di diplomatic, turn them keys and destroy this bitch. And that's going to come to pass. So the Lord is going to work on the minds of these leaders to just say to hell with it and just push them buttons and turn them keys and, you know, deliver us out of here with the missiles. Verse 11, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Now, what is what is the land of unwalled villages? America. In the ancient world, you had a citadel or you had walls protecting the city. There's no walls protecting the cities here. You see? I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and have neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places, that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. So the Lord is going to put the spirit on the Russians. All right. To have the final. The final win. Because when you go into the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter, which I'm going to do right now. The Edomite Empire. Ends. With the Russians. Revelations 13 and 1. And I stood upon the, the, the sand of the sea. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Having seven heads and ten horns. Which represents NATO and the EU. That beast. That beast really is going into like Edomite. Um, rulerships. You see. This beast is going to different timelines of Edomite rulerships. You have the seven heads and the ten horns. And upon his um and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And a beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now this is going into the timelines. Alright? The leopard represents Alexander. And his feet was like the feet. And, so like, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Now, John the Revelator saw a strange beast in the dream, actual strange beast, but the Spirit of the Lord has put it on the prophets, the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone to interpret the dream and break it down. So the feet representing the bear means the Russians. Alexander is identified with the leopard. The Russians are identified with the bear, meaning it started the, the major prominent Edomite that really started this Edomite dominion over the world was Alexander, but it's going to end with the Russians. Because the Russians are going to be leading the charge with the other nations against our Lord Yahweh Shah. America is going to already going to be destroyed. All right. Russia is going to survive. You seen this? You seen the landmass of Russia? That shit is huge. Don't get it twisted. America is going to get their shit off, and a lot of parts of um, Russia is going to be destroyed. But the remaining Russians to the left, they're going to be leading the charge with the with very few other nations to the left. That are, that are joined with them, all right, to fight against our Lord. It says, and his mouth 
as the mouth of a lion, which represents Great Britain, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Right. So that dragon is a so-called white man. That's like it. That 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 beast, all right, is NATO and the EU, all right. But Revelations, the 13th chapter, is going into different rulerships under the so-called white man. See? I'm going to go back to the auto article. It says, unlike Russia, whose war in Ukraine has raised serious concern in the Baltics of an attack on NATO territory. And we saw on the map the Baltic Sea. Bring it back up. The Baltic Sea is over here. Boom. The Baltic Sea is right there. They want that area, man. You can control oil in it. Um, you know, you can control where trade exports go, oil go. You know, most of the oil comes out of Russia. See right here. It comes out of Russia. It goes through this particular sea and goes to like the United Kingdom and these different European nations. All right, they're right here, the Mediterranean Sea. Now with these sanctions. On Russia, they have to take different trade routes, man. And this is affecting the price of oil, uh, gas. And the price of gas goes up and everything goes up because the ships that use the gas have to increase price. The people that sell the goods now have to increase price and it's a chain reaction. You know? Alright, now it says... Ukraine, Russia, it says, unlike Russia, whose war in Ukraine has raised serious concern in the Baltics of an attack on NATO territory, China is not an adversary. NATO leaders said, what Stalinberg has repeatedly called on Beijing to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which Moscow says is a special operation. At the summit, NATO agreed a long-term support package of Ukraine in addition to billions of dollars already pledged in weapons and financial support. And that's that's causing a lot of uproar here in the United States because people right now, their pockets are dry. And they're like, why the fuck are we giving billions of dollars to Ukraine when over here we're struggling? Well, the billions of dollars not going to the average Ukrainian person, man. It's going to the oligarchs, the leaders. That's the whole deal, the contract between Hunter Biden. Because Hunter Biden was in Ukraine. Way before all this shit popped off. So they were already setting the stage for this. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that arms would continue to be supplied to Kiev, which seeks to help to overpower Russia's artillery. Now let's be real. Let's go back to this map. Because this shit is retarded. This is Ukraine. Right? How the hell can this com this country with a, with a GDP per capita of less than 10,000 Go against fucking Russia, man. Look at this thing, man. You see what I'm saying? It's just like it doesn't make any sense. A lot of this a lot of these places, Kazakhstan, they gon' they yo, if you met somebody from Kazakhstan, a lot of them were like half Russian. You know? So Uzbekistan. So Russia's gonna really start expanding, man. And get a lot of these Eastern nations. They're already allied with Iran and Syria, you know? So there's no way that little small nation could overtake Russia, man. It's bullshit. It says, it says, um, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that arms will continue to be supplied to Kiev, which seeks to help to overpower Russia. Artillery, particularly in eastern Ukraine, where Russia is slowly advancing in a grinding war of attrition. The message is we will continue to do so and to do this intensively. For as long as it is necessary to emble Ukraine to defend itself, Scholz said, the Western alliance is also in agreement that big allies such as the United States, Germany, Britain, and Canada pre-assigned troops, weapons, and equipment to the Baltics and intensified training exercises. NATO is also aiming to have as many as 300,000 troops ready to deploy for deployment in case of conflict, part of an enlarged NATO response force. Russia is achieving the opposite of what Putin sought 
when he launched his war in Ukraine in part to counter the expansion of NATO, Western leaders say. Well, Finland, which has a 810 mile border with Russia, and Sweden, home of the founder of the Nobel Peace Prize, are now set to be bring well-trained militaries into the NATO aimed at giving the alliance Baltic Sea superiority. So again, NATO is nothing more than expansion of the United States military. You know, um, NATO's military is made up 70%, I believe, 70 to 74% of the United States military. One of the most important message from President Putin was that he was against any further NATO enlargement. Stalinberg said on Tuesday evening he wanted less NATO now President Putin is getting more NATO on his borders. So what do you want this guy to do? You know? Like if Russia was to have Mexico ally with them, it will be all out war. So the United States is very hypocritical. However, I'm going to read the scripture. Actually, let me, because uh, it's a lot here. Thing had stopped. Um, yeah, the Lord's a man of war. We'll close out with this scripture right here. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Because guess what, Putin? The Lord is the one in control. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So nothing happens by coincidence. All these things that are being done now. Alright. Is being done by the Lord. A time to love and a time to hate. So these guys out here. These people out here. The primarily in Christian church saying the Lord don't deal with hate. They're not dealing with the scriptures because the scriptures deal with balance. There is a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And we are in a time of war. Why? Because when you read Matthew the 24th chapter, the disciples ask the Lord, what are certain indications of the end times? And one of the major indications was wars and rumors of war. So we are in the end times. Okay. Once that RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is implemented on a major level, then World War Three could take place, which just can't happen soon enough. And then we could be delivered, Lord willing, we have the hopeful elect. All right. So this is a beautiful thing, man. You know, they wanted peace. They was like, nah, no, no, don't have them join. But the Lord said, hell no, we're going to have them join because the Lord is dealing with war. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakodash, the blinds of the apostles and the elders of Great Mill Soul True Well. Salutations to the whole for the elect out there, you Akim, Tisadakim, that do the singing in their most truth and sincerity. Shalom.